Hi everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here today. We are seeing an interesting turn of events. After the Prime Minister of India, Modi, visited the United States a couple of weeks ago, he agreed to pursue building a U.S. Navy base in India. And this move is a move that has the potential to undermine India's position in the BRICS bloc. This is because the bloc, as any team, would have to move forward in a cohesive manner. And having one of its founding member countries take a step in a somewhat of a different direction would mean risking the future of the entire partnership. Of course, there is also an elephant in the room, the China and India relations that have not really been exactly friendly as the result of their border dispute, um, but their trade ties and geopolitical aspirations, as well as pure size of China's economy, it, it, those things haven't really allowed a full-scale conflict to unfold. Having said that, in light of the recent events and with the BRICS Bloc Summit being just several short weeks away, it may be safe to assume that India would need to decide um, what course it wants to pursue. I would imagine that it will be part of the discussion in August. Of course, India will still benefit from multiple bilateral agreements that it has already entered into, but it is really challenging to see the BRICS bloc just kind of going along with some of the country's latest decisions, primarily, of course, the Navy base. With that in mind, the BRICS announced that they will launch a gold-backed currency. It is an idea that has been floating around for a very long time. Countries of the global south, as well as those who want to see multipolarity in this world, are cheering on the idea. But how realistic is it? Is it truly feasible? Countries of the Global South see the US dollar as a threat to their future development, a threat to the safety of their economies, including the bank reserves. This is why they are seeking alternative ways for cross-border trade. They don't want to be cut off from the international settlement system like SWIFT or have to deal with sanctions if their political um, agenda doesn't align with that of the West. So the big question is, does the BRICS bloc have the capability to execute internal trade in domestic currencies? And how do they make their currency or currencies of choice valuable? It is no secret that currencies on an individual basis of these countries are much weaker. There is less demand for them. Even though with respect to the yuan, it should be mentioned that close to 70 central banks at this time do hold yuan in their reserves. This is a much greater number than just a couple of years ago. Whether the yuan will become a common denominator for all BRICS nations remains unclear at this time, but there's obviously no denying the fact that a common currency will help these nations increase trade and make goods and services less expensive for their consumers. This is because they won't have to pay foreign currency exchange costs, and in addition to that, since there won't be foreign exchange expenses, goods and services will be cheaper for their consumers, which does make a world of a difference for these developing nations. The BRICS bloc nations have the capability to trade in a currency other than the US dollar. They have already proved it. We have seen multiple bilateral agreements entered into by Brazil, by Russia, India, South Africa, and China with external parties. Of course, the biggest hit to the value of the US dollar comes from the partnership with the Saudis and the UAE because China and India are the first and the second, respectively, largest global importers of oil. Both China and India have more than 1.4 billion people and combined, they make up more than a third of the world's population. There are 8 billion people in the world. Just think what long-term implications this has. The more development India sees in the future, the higher the demand will become. In addition to that, Russia, a founding member state of the bloc, is the third oil producer. Since more than 17% of its reserves are in renminbi, Russia does have a much greater preference for paying China in renminbi. 
The second biggest oil producer is the Saudi Arabia. Recently, the Saudis agreed to trade oil with China using the Yuan. And as we have discussed before here on my channel multiple times, the Saudi Arabia has already expressed interest in joining the BRICS bloc. Now, are there any other reasons why the countries of the so-called Global South would want to de-dollarize? Here's something that nobody's talking about. The BRICS nations will benefit from a weak dollar because it will make it easier for them, for these nations, to repay their debts owed to international organizations, such as the World Bank or the International Monetary Fund. So there's also that aspect of this new changing world order. Do they have to repay their debts? Absolutely. But just like a consumer, just like you and I, when the currency is weak, your debt becomes less expensive and repaying it at that point in time is what you want to do. Okay, so the bilateral agreements will likely exist in addition to the BRICS bloc introducing a gold-backed currency. I want to dedicate an entire video to the BRICS gold-backed currency. I would like to spend more time on it. So please make sure that you turn on your notifications if that is something that you're interested in. I do plan on uploading that video soon. Um, one more important aspect that I do want to discuss here is this incredible wealth transfer that is bound to take place as the result of the global hegemon effectively losing its power. When the BRICS create, and we know that they are about to announce it during the summit in Johannesburg, so when they create a gold-backed currency, any fiat currency, especially a currency that is backed by the full faith of uh, governments that are tangled in waging wars, um, those fiat currencies will be eventually less and less valuable as the majority of the global population realizes that they do have alternative routes. They don't have to play along. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you give it a like, consider sharing it, subscribe to my channel. I would absolutely love to have you back for my next one. And if you enjoy reading, check out my newsletter on Substack. You will find all of these links below. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one. Take care.